I want to join you in welcoming to the White House the leaders of America's small businesses, the community bankers who serve them, and the members of Congress who play such a leadership role on small business issues. Small businesses are the engine of America's dynamism. You create and sustain most of the jobs in the country. You are the anchor of our communities, and you are ever more closely linked to the global economy. When you prosper, the nation prospers. And when the national economy is hurting, you bear that burden heavily, but you will lead us out of this. We are now more than a year into a very tough recession. The national numbers are stark, but they cannot capture the damage to a community when a factory has to cut jobs or defer investment or close its doors, leaving families in that town with dreams deferred and less to spend. The national numbers cannot capture the dashed hopes of the innovator who has thrown everything into an enterprise only to watch it fail for lack of orders or credit. The President understands the crucial role that small business plays in America, and that's why we are moving with exceptional speed to put in place the largest program of investments and tax cuts since the Second World War to get Americans back to work and get our economy growing again. That's why we've launched a very substantial program to get credit flowing again and to address the nation's housing crisis. That's why the recovery plan and the President's budget includes additional targeted programs for small businesses. These programs include a provision that nearly doubles to 250,000, the amount of new capital investment you can write off on your taxes. It includes provisions that reduce and then altogether eliminate capital gains taxes on the sale of stock in small businesses, a commitment to make health insurance more affordable for small businesses by providing refundable tax credits. And today, the IRS will announce that small businesses will now be able to carry back their operating losses five instead of the usual two years in order to increase your cash flow. In order to increase your cash flow as we come out of this period and allow you to invest more in your operations. Now, the President's going to outline a program of additional actions in a few minutes, but before he does that, and before I introduce our speakers, I want to deliver a clear message to our nation's banks. Across this country, thousands of small businesses are finding it harder to get the credit necessary to stay in business. Credit is essential to economic recovery, and we need our nation's banks to go the extra mile in keeping credit lines in place on reasonable terms for, for viable businesses. When banks individually pull back out of a sense of prudence and caution, the collective impact of those actions will make the economy weaker and make each individual bank worse off, because by pulling back on credit, you push businesses to pull back, and this dynamic can feed on itself. The government of the United States has put in place extraordinary protections for the banking system so that banks can continue to benefit from low-cost funds so that they have access to the liquidity and capital they need. And we need you to put that assistance to work for the American economy. Many banks in this country took too much risk, but the risk now to the economy is that you will take too little risk. As part of the President's commitment to increase transparency and accountability, I'm asking for new reporting requirements on small business lending. We will require the top 21 banks, the largest 21 banks in the country that are receiving financial assistance from the government to include small business loans in their monthly reports. And today, I am asking our bank regulators to call for quarterly reporting of small business loans so that we can carefully monitor the degree of credit that is flowing to our nation's enterprises and small business owners. We need every bank in the country to do everything in their power to provide the credit that small business needs to operate and to expand. You need, you need, you banks need to make the extra effort to make sure that good loans are getting to creditworthy small businesses in order to serve the larger public good of moving this nation to recovery. And given the role that many banks played in causing this crisis, you bear a special responsibility for helping America get out of it. Now, I want to introduce Cynthia Blankenship, the President of the Bank of the West. And I want you to hear from her what it's going to take to address the challenges to community banks and small businesses, not just in Grapevine, Texas, but in communities across the country. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Cynthia Blankenship. 
now I'm vice chairman of Bank of the West in Great yep. Bend, Texas. All right. We've got and some guidance. The president was up next. He's not. With all due respect to her, we're going to take a quick break and come back and hear what the president has to say on this and on AIG. Um, credits in their market. We are so very pleased and grateful to the administration for recognizing the important role that the SBA programs play in optimizing the extension of credit to the American entrepreneurs. When my husband Gary and I started our bank in 1986, we decided to develop our niche in the small business market. We found the SBA program a valuable tool in providing the credit terms complementary to small business needs. Our bank has been a user of the SBA program for decades, from being a top producer to a minimum user. We were the first preferred lender in the North Texas area and used the program extensively for many years. We are proud to use the SBA program as a tool to provide capital to small business for startups and expansion. We witnessed firsthand how the SBA programs contributed to the creation of jobs and opportunities in our market. However, in recent years, the program became onerous and unaffordable to the borrower. As a bank, we have not been able to sell the guaranteed portions of the loans in the secondary market. Consequently, we are now holding in inventory $11 million in loans that could be used as extensions of credit if we could sell those loans and have those dollars available. There must be demand in those markets to maximize this process. We are proud of the positive changes to the SBA program. All community bankers will be encouraged about the opportunities the new program will afford to leverage credit lending dollars and give the small businesses an affordable way to finance future growth. We look forward to putting a new program into effect immediately and commend the administration and the Treasury for, to encourage our borrowers by making the program more affordable. This is an incredible tool for community banks nationwide to help jumpstart the economy and the credit markets. Thank you. Thank you.